Welcome back, Algebra 2 Trade. We are continuing with 5.5 graphs of tangent and cotangent functions. Your essential question is how do I graph tangent and cotangent functions? Uh, Mr. Yang still sucks. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and continue. We do need to use the unit circle again. If you still need to draw it in, go ahead. But hopefully you have memorized all of your trig functions by now. The first thing I need you guys to copy down is the library uh, parent functions once again. And you're going to copy down the tangent function information. Now something that's really significant for the tangent function that you should notice is that we do have some dashed lines and we're going to explain that a little more later. We also notice here that the period is only pi. In other words, the period is going to be a lot smaller before the graph ends up repeating itself. So you see here, it's going to be for a very small section. Also, you should notice that we don't actually start at zero. We're going to be starting at negative pi over two. So from negative pi over two all the way to pi over two, that is our interval of pi. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started on this. So the first thing I actually want us to do is to graph the parent function just to get used to the idea of how to graph them in case that we can't memorize them. First thing I would need to do is that knowing that I'm going to be starting at negative pi over 2, and even if you didn't know that and you started off at 0, you would notice that your graph isn't finished, so you would have to go backwards anyway. But for me, since I know it, I'm going to go ahead and start there. Uh, negative pi over 2 going backwards, my y value is negative 1. And my, R, my x value actually is 0. So at negative pi over 2, it's undefined. So as we graph that later, we'll go ahead and explore that a little more. But let's go ahead and continue. We have tangent of, the next one is going to be negative pi over 4. So when we draw a pi over 4 triangle, or even on the unit circle, you should end up with negative 1. Okay. And that's something you should memorize by now. If you don't remember it, I can go ahead and sketch that in. We know that these two legs are exactly the same. So it's opposite over adjacent. That will give me a negative one because this measurement is negative. Okay, so that's where I got that one from. Then we have tangent of zero. That one's going to give me y over x, zero tangent of pi over 4. This time it will give me a positive one. Then we have tangent of pi over 2. And that's going to give me another undefined. Now those are the main ones that I'm going to use, but in order to kind of like smooth out my curve, I'm also going to include tan of pi over 3 and tangent of pi over 6. Okay. So tangent of pi over 3, same, same thing as tangent of 60 degrees. That's going to be radical 3 over 1. So that's the radical 3. This one is going to be 1 over radical 3. And 1 over radical 3, actually I'm going to simplify that. It's the equivalent of 0.577 over here, the equivalent of 1.73. So we're going to go ahead and use these values to go ahead and sketch the parent function. So example one. Actually, not before even that, sorry. We're going to go ahead and sketch the parent function. So parent function tan x. We have, let's see here, then there. So I'm going to have negative pi over 4 and negative pi over 2, pi over 4 over here, and then pi over 2 over here. Wherever my function is undefined, I'm going to go ahead and draw in the dashed lines because that's where my function will not cross and we're going to be asymptotic to it. In other words, we're going to glide right along it but never actually touch it. Okay, So the different thing about tangent functions is that they do go towards infinity. So the range doesn't stop at 1 like they do for sine and cosine. 
And let's go ahead and just plot the points that we have over here. So at 0, I am at 0. At negative pi over 4, I am at negative 1. At pi over 4, I am at positive 1. And then if I wanted to smooth out the curve a little more, I would go ahead and insert pi over 3 as well. Maybe somewhere around there. As well as pi over 6. Pi over 6, somewhere past 0.5. Pi over 3, a little past here. So it's going to be all the way up there, kind of off. And I'm going to go ahead and draw in the curve. Here. All right. So it kind of looks almost like a cubic function, where we got a little curve right at the origin, and then it curves upwards right along the asymptote at pi over 2. Okay? So it shouldn't be linear. It should be a little more curved here. My marker's a bit too thick here. But again, it should look something like that. All right, so with that, we're going to go ahead and use the parent function and graph a transformation. So we've already learned different types of transformations with the sine and cosine curves, and we're going to use the same exact things here. So we're going to sketch transformation with y equals negative 3 tan of 2x. So with this one, we don't have any vertical or horizontal shifts. However, we do have an amplification of three, negative 3. And we do have a B value of 2, which means my period is going to change for this problem. Okay, so let's go ahead and figure out how that's supposed to look. So first off, I have the parent function. I'm going to be amplifying by negative 3. In other words, this whole parent function, the tangent function, will flip upside down. And instead of capping off at 1 right here and negative 1, we're going to become negative 3 and positive 3. Okay, So well, let's go ahead. And first, before I even do that, let's calculate the new period. So the period will be pi over 2. And the reason it's pi instead of 2 pi is because we're talking about the period for a tangent function, which is only pi, as opposed to sine and cosine, which was 2 pi. So we're going to split up that pi into 2 because we're dividing by b. And then we still need to split up that further into four equal parts. So let's go ahead and do that. So pi over 2 into four parts. What I want to think of is that this side has to add up to pi over 4. And this side has to add up to pi over 4 as well. And that's because we do have one side in the negative region and we have one side in the positive region. So here we're going to end at negative pi over 4. And over here, we're going to end at pi over 4. Then in the closer region here, negative pi over 8, pi over 8. So these are our parts. And then, of course, 0 is right in between. Okay, So there are four equal parts. I'm going to go ahead and sketch that now. There are no vertical and horizontal shifts again. So all we really have to do is amplify it and flip it around. So 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. And then I'm going to go ahead and draw in pi over 4, negative pi over 4, negative pi over 8, and pi over 8. Okay, So this might lo not look as compressed as it should be, but that's just because I need the room to draw it. But this is a compressed version of my parent function. So here I'm going to go ahead and plot my points now. We still have an undefined region at pi over 4 and negative pi over 4. 
because they're now my equivalent of pi over 2 and negative pi over 2 in the parent function. Negative pi over 8 and pi over 8 now take over the spots for these guys over here. But I do have to remember that I'm amplifying by negative 3. So here I'm actually going to be at positive 3. Here I'll be at negative 3. And here I'll be at 0. So let's sketch the curve. And just like that, you have sketched the transformation of that tangent function. All right? Continuing on, we do have another one that we're going to cover today, and that's the cotangent. So it's very similar to the tangent function itself, but slightly different. Okay. So the first thing I want you guys to do is, once again, copy down what a cotangent function looks like. Very similar, except this time we do have a period of pi, but here we're actually starting at 0, and we're going to pi. So slightly different than the tangent function. And all of that is actually explained in these two boxes, in this like little section right here. So make sure to read that. I'm going to go ahead. And instead of drawing the parent function, we're just going to go ahead and start example two. So make sure to have that parent function in the library, I mean, in your notes already. And then I'm going to go ahead and do y equals 2 times the cotangent of x minus pi over 4 plus 3. So this one, the only transformations that we have are a couple of translations and an amplification. Okay, so let's go ahead and start. I'm going to go ahead and take the parent function that I drew earlier for myself and use it as a reference for us right over here. Okay, so the original cotangent function has an undefined area at 0. But here I'm being told that I need to shift to the right by pi over 4. So let's go ahead and first fix our axes. So pi over 4, pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, pi, and then 5 pi over 4. My new uh, undefined section will start at pi over 4 since I'm shifting everything over, and it will end over at 5 pi over 4. Okay. Here we have a value of 1 at pi over 4. But since we're shifting everything over, it's going to be defined at pi over 2. I amplify it by 2, so I'm going to multiply it by 2. So rather than starting at 1, I'll now be at 2. But then I also have a vertical shift at 3, so I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3. There's my point. Over here, the next point would be 0. But 0 times 2 is just 0, so adding 3 onto that, 1, 2, 3. And then finally, we have negative 1 over here. I'm going to multiply that by 2. That becomes negative 2. 2, 3, 4, 5. Sorry. I need to see all this. So negative 2. And then I'm going to add 3 onto that. So I become 1, 2, 3, positive 1. And this one would be my cotangent curve. So again, it looks like a cubic function. Curves right there in the middle and then it becomes asymptotic to the undefined areas. Okay? And actually, if I were to draw this, it would continue on over here as well and go on and on for many, many periods because it just keeps on going all the way through the x-axis. Okay? So, there is my transformed cotangent function. Again, just using the parent function and our knowledge of the transformations. All right, so go ahead, rewind, replay as needed. Otherwise, move on to the Google Forms, and we'll see you guys tomorrow.